Night number one of the Bill Gardner Sprintacular at Lincoln Park Speedway to the green. Bill going to take back off, and once again, Ballou going to charge up into the top spot here as they work to the back straightaway. Moles going to fight back a little bit more now. He's going to go ahead and short slide the 12 off of turn number four. Ballou going to switch lines down to the bottom. Lat number one, Moles going to show the way. Mitchell Moles had a lap number one. Robert Ballou going to sneak by and take it from him. Moles with the run to the back stretch here. Works back to the inside of the 12. They'll go slide for slide. The 19 going to retake it. Ballou going to come back after him. Advantage once again to Moles. So two laps in, two laps to the AME Electrical number 19. Now Ballou has company to the outside. Here comes Seavey in 57. Logan Seavey taking that Abacus race at number 57 up to the top shelf. He's going to take over second now. Going to charge after your leader. Picking up win number 12 on the season. Up at Macon now, trying to make it win number 13. He'll charge by for the top spot here. Bounces are off of the cushion. CB takes over. Ballou going to move his way up into second. Mitchell Moles getting a shuffle back to third. Carson Garrett, Ricky Lewis right now going to be your top five. Mitchell Moles still running in the third spot. A little back behind them. you got a battle going on just outside of the top five. Justin Grant in the four. Ricky Lewis in the 41. you got the 21 AZ of Jason Pursley all there. Pursley going to stay ahead of that battle here. Rolls the bottom side of the speedway. Bobbles are just a little bit, and Ricky Lewis going to make his way by. Ricky Lewis rolls by. Looks like a little bit of smoke. Not sure if it's coming off the engine or out of the engine, though, as he will continue to roll. Blue flag going to start to make its appearance here as your leader has found traffic with 19 to go. Just about having to start tiptoeing through the back of the field here. Ballou, a distant second, 1.5 seconds last time at the start finish line. It is 1.687 as traffic. Now going to be a factor here. Right in front of your leader. Look out, CB. Nearly collected. Thought he had come to a stop. Oh, and Ballou. Nearly collected by one of the slower cars as well. As we get ready to go back to green, Amantia and Burns both returning from the Indy Metal finishing work area. 18 laps remain, and we've got them stacked up over in turns one and two. That's Grant and four. Stacked up like downtown Indy for a second. Unfortunately, Grant ends up coming to a stop. 18 laps remain. See if he's going to bring him around the top of turns three and four. Going to dive down to the middle of turns one and two. Mole's going to set side on second. Couldn't get it. Ballou going to go ahead and roll back by and hold on to the position. Leader back up to the top of turns three and four. Ballou down to the bottom. Closes up quick on the 57 of Logan Seavey. Couldn't make the run, though, as that car flying the left front of the back straightway side by side with the top spot as they work into turns three and four. Coming around to click off lap number 14. Who's going to have it? It will be Seavey on the outside. Logan Seavey holds on to the race lead, now adjusting down low. Takes the line away from the 12. Most of the field mired around the bottom. Now they are all over the place. Leader. Still working top shelf through turns three and four. Takes it down to the middle groove over in turns one and two. CV with nine laps remaining here. Blue a distant second. Mitchell Moles continues to run in third. Battle for the fourth spot. Here comes Bacon to the outside. Ugh, contact between him and Carson Garrett. Bacon went skyward for a second. Settles it back down and holds on to it. What a save by the Macho Man. That does allow Ricky Lewis to come up and try to steal the spot away, though, as they work through turns three and four. Lewis on the outside, Bacon down to the inside. It will be Ricky Lewis. They were all kinds of stacked up coming off of turn number four. Everybody sorts it out. We stay green. Three wide around to the front straightaway. Ricky Lewis over the outside. Got it. Works by Bacon. Works by Garrett. Bacon back to the inside. Going to retake the spot. And just as fast as he picked their pocket, he gets caught. Has to give it all back. Robert Ballou has cut down the advantage a little bit. He was 1.3 seconds trailing just a couple laps ago. He's brought it down to 7 tenths of a second. Loses a little bit that time as they come to the wave of the white flag. Leader hits the back straightway for the final time. Night number one of the Bill Gardner Sprintacular at Lincoln Park Speedway goes to Logan Seavey. He's going to crawl out of the car. Race fans, let him hear it. Your winner, Logan Seavey. The confetti will fly his ninth win of the season with the tour, his 13th overall between USAC National Sprints, Midgets, and the Chili Bowl. 
as he'll get the helmet off, and Christy going to catch up with tonight's winner. That's two in a row for Logan Seavey. He picked up the most recent win with the Amsel USAC National Sprint Car Series back at Top Gun Weekend over at Macon Speedway a little bit over a week ago. He does it again here tonight at Lincoln Park Speedway for night number one of the Bill Gardner Sprint-tacular. It's his first career Amsel USAC National Sprint Car victory here at LPS, though he has a handful of midget wins here. And Logan, you saw the 12 one time readjusted. Do you feel like what you did there to hold the 12 off was sort of waiting on that pressure before you made a move and really kicked it up a notch? Yeah, it's so hard to change lines when you're leading. You know, you see it all the time where second has a little bit of an advantage. And um, my car was really good on the cushion early, so it's hard to give that up. But, you know, it always goes away here, especially when the bottom's that good. And it was getting slick on exit of two. And um, I knew it was time to get down. And, and uh, you know, lap traffic was on the bottom. So I kind of knew that would give me a little bit more time to, to figure it out. And then that yellow come out and I piled into him and I thought I broke my front end and uh, my steering wheel was all crooked and I had to readjust some things inside the car but um, luckily yeah, this thing held together and uh, Ronnie and Kurt gave me a great race car like they always do and uh, yeah to get one here at Putnamville is cool. I, um, you know when I first started coming out here this is one of my favorite tracks in Indiana and it's beat me up for a lot of years so it's cool to, cool to win one here and uh, get these guys back in victory line. Had the hood off after those heat races, kind of working on some things. Do you feel like you found what you were looking for? Yeah, for sure. You know, we just had a wire um, break, actually a kill switch that, um, you know, something that has cost us a race in the past. So we're just being extra careful to, to make sure that this thing uh, is hitting on all eight cylinders and, and just firing in general. So, um, yeah, it's just things that these guys are getting really good at and uh, avoiding issues like that is is what makes you, you know, contend for championships. So um, these guys are doing great. We have a great package with DRC chassis and uh, CSI shocks and, Stanton Engines are doing a great job for me, and I'm um, just really comfortable in the car. So um, couldn't do it without all of our partners here. It's cool to get MPV Express back in Victory Lane again. I know Michael will be really happy about that, and um, Brent and, and John, everybody watching back at, back at uh, home. It's uh, cool to get their car in Victory Lane. Passed a lot of cars there on that initial first couple laps to get out in the lead, and then all those yellows having to defend. How did you have to adjust for that? Um, yeah, like I said, I was nervous, actually, when I hit that lap car. I thought, I thought my race might be over, and... Um, it, it kept feeling like it was getting worse and worse, and I thought I was folding up a drag link. I was having uh, flashbacks that happened to Justin Grant there in Grandview and uh, right in front of me, and I could um, just feel something going away in my front end. So um, just glad to finish it out there. But, um, yeah, it's tricky when you have to change your lines, and I'm uh, not really known for running the bottom, and I was doing big old wheelies down the back stretch just because you're going so slow, and then there's just so much grip. You just drag the tail tank all the way down the back stretch, and and then it's hard to get into turn three. So um, there's lots of adjustments since I car I was I was doing to make myself better once I did move down. And I feel like every time I, I did get a little bit better. And um, yeah, I didn't really know whether to blow through the middle or, or really get down by the tires. But um, it seemed like whatever I did, my car went through there really nicely. And uh, I could just, you know, cruise around there. He narrowly avoided disaster there on a the first few laps. Logan CV picks up two in a row with the Amsel USAC National Sprint Car Series. He's your winner of night number one of the Bill Gardner Sprintacular here at Lincoln Park Speedway. He tames the Putnamville cushion and gets it done.